Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, Cool Wake Magic Gameplay. This time around, we are doing a bit of Dark Elf against Dawi action on the map Stir River. So, I'm not the biggest fan of the Dark Elves in general. Um, they're definitely not, not one of my favorite factions. I feel like they're, they're kind of one-dimensional. It's kind of difficult to uh, play around and have different crazy strats or try out different things with them. Uh, they're very, very infantry-centric, and uh, that's kind of all it comes down to. So I don't, don't have a tendency to play them, but uh, I did want to give them a shot here against the uh, good old stunties and see how well I could do. So for my lord, I did decide to bring Marathi, and that's a bit of a combination of a few factors. Uh, she does give you uh, a good armor piercing, she gives you decent melee stats, uh, and then she does back it up with Heart Render and Dark Sword, as well as Enchanting Beauty, which is a great melee attack debuff. Uh, minus 18 uh, melee attack is almost, uh, that's almost 20% that uh, chance to hit that gets knocked off. And against the dwarf units that don't have great melee attack to begin with, this can really, really cripple them pretty badly. She also does have, uh, I only brought one spell, I only brought Soul Blight here, which, of course, provides minus 30 armor, as well as minus 25% weapon damage, and against any non-great weapon infantry, this is actually pretty decent. And you'll almost always see at least some non-great weapon infantry from the dwarves, because, of course, you have slayers and um, long beards, those sorts of units, uh, because, obviously, Dark Elves have some good shooting, so generally your opponent will want to bring at least some shielding. I also to bring Power of Darkness to improve my power reserves. Definitely a slight mistake here, unfortunately. I should have tried to bring in an extra spell, uh, because there's simply no way and I can make use of uh, Soul Blight this much. I didn't have an extra caster, so definitely a bit of a mistake on my part. Uh, she also does have the ability Spiteful Conjuration, which provides an 8 minus 15 armor debuff, which when stacked on top of Soul Blight does mean you're knocking off 45 armor on a, a Dabi unit, so that's pretty, pretty solid in my opinion. For my front line, it is a bunch of Blackheart Corsairs. These guys aren't the most amazing unit, but they're also not the worst. Uh, they'll, they do have decent melee attack, decent, not great melee defense, uh, but they do have a bonus against infantry on top of their weapon strength of 28. Uh, so they can definitely carve through the lower and mid-tier dwarven infantry. They'll trade really well with, uh, with Slayers, that sort of stuff. They've got 80 armor, so they're pretty tanky against non-AP. Uh, they're pretty quick on their feet with 40 speed, and they do have a decent amount of HP. So in general, they're just a well-rounded unit, and I think they're uh, generally pretty pretty worthwhile to bring just because they're pretty cheap and efficient. Uh, and of course with the armor debuffs from Marathi they should be much better. They are backed by three units of Harkonneth Executioners and uh, I think these guys are pretty great. I didn't want to bring a few of them because if your opponent decides to bring several runesmiths, rune lords with runes of wrath and rune, they can definitely melt these guys down quite a bit. But Harkonneth Executioners do have uh, pretty solid melee stats augmented by a ridiculous bonus against infantry of 14. So their melee attack is pretty crazy. That puts them up to 52 melee attack against infantry and they can definitely hack and slash their way through the dwarves and they do have murderous mastery which is really pretty potent as well. Uh, plus 100 armor makes them pretty tanky as well on top of that. Three and so Dark Shards with the Shields provide me with some armor piercing shooting. Definitely we're having a bit of a slow start here, so I'll just throw things into full speed. Dark Shards with the Shields can of course chew through most Dwarven troops pretty quickly. And you can see I'm put positioning my Dark Riders here, my two units, I'm trying to push towards my opponent and perhaps get a uh, cheeky charge on my opponent's back line. In the meantime, I do have two units of Reaper Bolt Throws, and this is a little bit of a, perhaps, mistake. The problem with the Reaper Bolt Throws is that they have very bad range. The uh, High Elf ones, I do believe, have 370 or 380 range, whereas the Dark Elf ones shoot a little faster, though barely, uh, the difference is negligible. Uh, but the range difference is definitely significant. It's about 20 or 30 meters difference, and it's making it very difficult for my uh, uh, Reapers to get into position to cut down this cannon. And my opponent decided to do a bit of an interesting build himself. I did bring those Reaper Bolt Throws to shut down the arty and then to chew away at infantry formations, but my opponent decided to bring a highly veteran up cannon, so it's going to be able to counter battery pretty effectively, and shortly you will start seeing some of these Reaper Bolt Throws get taken offline as they set up and begin to fire. My opponent's build, definitely very veteran C heavy, you can see brought Thorgrim Grudge Bear, who is very tanky. Uh, he does have crazy melee defense, all that sort of stuff. He also has Stand Your Ground, the Great Book of Grudges, as well as a Pseudo Frenzy with the High King, uh, which affects all near everybody, everybody nearby. Um, and provides a frenzy if their H if their HP is lower than fifty percent. Of course, he also does have Foe Seeker. But one of the cool things about Thorgrim, or not cool things for my opponent, is the fact that he is, does count as a large model. So Marathi will get a bonus against him uh, due to her um, w due to her uh, halberd weapon. You can't see my opponent's, or the rest of my opponent's army is a bit of a mix, mixed bag. You can see three units of Slayers here, which are definitely going very heavy into the anti-large department. One of which is standing here defending the cannon, which is getting picked apart by the uh, bolt throwers and getting taken offline relatively quickly, already one gun down, though it is trading rather effectively with my Reapers over here, who are down to one gun and three. The rest of my opponent's army is a mix of Longbeards, Iron Breakers, um, some of which are heavily veteraned up, which is a little surprising, Tunes of Thunders, and 
of course, those slayers that we discussed before. So definitely a big anti-large presence, and I'm trying to get my troops, my Dark Riders, into position against these cannons. Uh, Iron Breakers are an interesting choice. I wasn't really expecting them, uh, because Iron Breakers don't have good AP values. They've got satchel charges. They can definitely lay the smack down on um, infantry blobs, even heavily armored ones with satchel charges, but um, they don't do great against armor. They're kind of a stalling unit. Uh, so definitely my opponent was gambling a lot on his cannons and thunders to do AP damage. I do manage to take an extra cannon offline and then swarm it with uh, the uh, cavalry, but unfortunately with that high veterancy, it's not going to route easily, and these slayers will put a beating on the Dark Riders. Over here, uh, I mean, this is definitely going to be a little bit of a lesson on why you should always um, set your art <coughs> set, you turn off your auto fire. The Iron Breaker just squandered about uh, half their satchel charges there, firing against a bunch of basically worthless infantry and doing an immense amount of damage to their slayers in the process. That's definitely one of those things that definitely didn't help my opponent there. You can see I didn't manage to get his cannon to route, uh, but in turn my Dark Riders have been forced to route themselves. In the meantime, my bolt thrower is working on these Iron Breakers, and you can see we are now engaging head-to-head -head, uh, with my opponent's Longbeard Slayers, all those sorts of units. I'm simply pushing through with the Black Arc Corsairs and going in... Um, for the fight. My opponent also do, did pull back his Iron Breakers and Thunders to support his cannon, which has actually been beneficial for me, because it means that this frontline fight is going to be favorable to me. You can see the Dark Shards immediately open up on the Iron Breakers, overwhelming those Bronze Shields. Uh, they are getting, of course, debuffed by Marathi's casting, and Thorgrim over here is getting kind of bogged down. While over here on the front line, with those debuffs hitting the Slayers, the Slayers hit a lot le uh, less hard, uh, does take off about 8 of their damage. And they lose, th and of course the uh, Longbeards lose armor, which is going to make them less effective against the Black Arc Corsairs. Uh, though it's not going to do too much against the, with the Harganath Executioners in the mix. Over here, you can see the Iron Breakers just getting annihilated. And despite my opponent putting some thunders at, to work here, uh, they're simply not going to be able to get through these effective shields on these guys. Over here, the cannon is going to get taken offline at the cost of a unit of, of uh, Dark Riders. I simply don't care. A unit of Dark Riders for a cannon is something I'm more than willing to accept. Um, I'm not really worried about the Slayers. Uh, I'm very much worried about the power of uh, the cannon though. Even one uh, on high veterancy. Marathi, I don't want her to just stay in there and fight Thorgrim. Thorgrim, despite being large and an easy target for her, is uh, definitely not something I want to be doing. So I do back off with Marathi and let the Dark Shards do some work. And you can see he's a very big target and all those bolts are just going in and smushing him pretty hard. Dark Riders do try to tie down the Thunders but fail because they get blasting charged and uh, definitely not a great situation. But it is giving me an opportunity to just stall my opponent and slowly but surely chew through this frontline fight. I do make some pretty major mistakes here though. You can see I have three units or four units blobbed up here on top of these Slayers and Longbeards, and I really should have swung around and encircled my opponent. This is definitely something you want to avoid at all costs, and this is 100% my fault and my mistake. Over here, Marathi is going to dive in and finishes off Thorgrim. You can see knocking him off his chair. Uh, no more grudging for you, uh, though I'm sure his people will probably still be still be ticked off. Um, and in the meantime, you can see those bolt throwers just chewing through the iron breakers and the thunders. While they do beat up Marathi a little bit, she is able to dive back into the blob and stay alive. In the meantime, on this flank, the Black Arc Corsairs are slugging out with the Longbeards and the Slayers, and of course, they will trade well with the Slayers and to hold up the Longbeards. Okay, it's important to keep in mind that both Longbeards and Slayers are significantly more expensive, so uh, Black Arc Corsairs a very efficient trade there. The iron breakers here are just getting overwhelmed by dark shard fire. You can see they do drop. Uh, I do drop another um, soul blight, and that's going to drop their armor by a further uh, 30. So definitely a pretty good win there. Uh, the black arc corsairs do try to dive in and finish some of them off, but uh, they're just going to get sh shot up quite a bit by the artillery and the satchel charge from some of these iron breakers. One of the big problems for black arc corsairs is that they their stats aren't that good against the iron breakers, who have ridiculous melee defense no matter what. Uh, interestingly enough, these guys are still have 57 models, despite being completely trashed HP-wise. Uh, but you can see those bolt thrower shots are going to start whittling them down. But you can see the bolt thrower definitely not chipping off the uh, models, uh, simply knocking down the HP. Um, and so not, not too great there. Nonetheless, my opponent is only now getting some of his slayers back into the fray. Uh, definitely a little bit of an issue. These slayers are still tied down over here. We're going to throw things to fast forward because my opponent's army is basically gone. It's just a bunch of slayers kind of doing a last hoorah here, uh, <laughs> charging into the teeth of my dark shards. Uh, as I do try to pull back some of these Black Arc Corsairs, so we can enjoy some good old-fashioned uh, Dowie stomping, as I do try to pull my Dark Shards back, and let the Argonath Executioners and the uh, Black Arc Corsairs hew down these uh, these little stunties uh, running around. They're, they're, they're doing all sorts of flips and kicks and crazy stuff. Um, and it really, I don't usually zoom into the fights, but uh, it's always kind of entertaining to see. Oh my goodness, he got his head lopped off. Um, <coughs> you can see that guy's still spinning around and doing some chops. But uh, it's definitely the end game for the Dawi as they do get chopped down and slaughtered in the pits here against Marathi and her blob of infantry. So definitely an interesting take for my opponent going in with very heavy veterancy. I think that's a bit of a mistake against Dark Elves uh, because they can punish it very badly with 
focused fire from units like Dark Shards. Dark Shards are very efficient against dwarves simply because Silver Shields allow them to negate enemy fire and they do a lot of AP damage in turn. Nonetheless, I did want to kind of try out the Reaper Bolt Throws. I found them rather effective. Um, it was interesting to try on Marathi. I do think the DOs were good, though not bringing an additional spell was definitely a mistake. Soul Stealer could have been very useful simply to heal her up, even though it wouldn't have done that much damage to the Dwarves. Uh, the main reason I didn't bring additional damage spells was because I was figured that the Dwarves do have a tendency to bring... Um, the Dwarves do have a tendency to bring... Um, a rune lords against the dark elves, and if you bring a rune lord on an anvil, it drops your ma magic damage by forty percent. If you bring locus of power, which can definitely be a little bit of a nuisance. Now, for the rest of this army, definitely I think it's pretty solid. It's definitely this is mostly a, definitely kind of an army I would suggest. Obviously, an, it's important to keep in mind that you can throw away cavalry, like cheap cavalry, if it will give you a win, like getting rid of a high end cannon. It's definitely worthwhile. Uh, the Dreamer Bolt Thrower actually did some great work against the Dawi. I think Bolt Throws are still a very solid choice. Uh, you just have to be wary of your short range when you're playing as the Dark Elves. You do have the 350 uh, rather than the 370 or 380 range that I do believe the High Elves have. <coughs> Dark Shard's a very good choice. Be wary of blobbing. Once again, that was a big mistake on my part. And um, from my opponent's perspective, I do think that. Um, a little too much commitment into the um, vet chevrons. I don't think chevrons are worth it, especially not in units like iron breakers or slayers. Uh, usually, you want <coughs> you want you want to bring chevrons if you have a specific purpose for a unit. Uh, it can be worthwhile on artillery just because it makes it much more accurate and lets it fire faster. So a cannon, as you saw in this situation, actually managed to take down that reaper bolt thrower entirely and would have probably been able to chip down the second one uh, at least a decent amount before going down. So it can definitely work in the case of artillery, but personally I don't think it's worthwhile uh, in the case of um, most infantry. Uh, slayers, you're not going to buff their melee stats into a competitive range. Their melee, st their melee defense is always going to be bad, their melee uh, or not adequate. Uh, their melee attack is always going to be ridiculous against their intended target, and even against squish units, they tear through them like a hot knife through butter. Uh, so you're not really benefiting too much from this many chevrons. Um, and uh, buffing Iron Breakers, honestly, isn't going to make too much of a difference either. Now, granted, it uh, if you think about it, the baseline chance to hit is about 45. Uh, as we discussed, the Harganeth Executioners are sitting at, uh, I do believe it's 45, and it actually might have been dropped. It might have been dropped to like 40 or 35. Uh, and the Harganeth Executioners only have a 50% chance to, only have a 50% chance to hit, uh, or 52% chance uh, baseline. So if you do the math uh, real quick, Iron Breakers, the uh, Harganeth Executioners against unupgraded Iron Breakers basically have a minimum chance to hit. Um, obviously, that's a little different if they get their char if both sides are trying to get their charges off. A little bit different, but Iron Breakers do have charge defense against all, so that doesn't really apply. Um, and Black Heart Corsairs are definitely on their minimum chance to hit. So you, you're not really gaining much by veteraning up your Iron Breakers. Their melee stats are still not... Their melee offense stats are still not good. They're still not going to be winning any medals for raw damage output. They're not going to break because they're Iron Breakers. Um, or not going to break easily because they're Iron Breakers. So really, the only thing you're... And the melee defense is just irrelevant. So it's just something I would keep in mind. I do, I do know this was a little bit of a ranty explanation. But definitely, if you do the math, it's just not efficient, usually, to veteran up your... Um, units uh, like this. You always want to kind of think that through a little bit. Uh, so that would definitely be my recommendation to my opponent. I'll be a little more careful with Thorgrim when you push him in, and um, definitely don't waste chevrons on especially such expensive units where you really don't need it. These chevrons would have been much better spent on a third unit of Thunders, um, an extra unit of Longbeards. Uh, I would have personally ditched the Iron Breakers in favor of more long, a bigger front line and an additional unit or two of th or Thunders. I think that would have been a better investment. but um, Or perhaps some Heroes. And yeah, definitely not three slayers, probably just two. But uh, there's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, and there obviously are some situations where it's worthwhile. So uh, obviously you got to keep that, like, just keep it with a take it with a grain of salt. Realize that there's situations where it works. Uh, an example of that is when you over chevron, for example, Eternal Guard uh, tends to benefit a lot from that. Um, but it's definitely certain situations. So definitely, nonetheless, great game to my opponent, Sir Sean1192 here. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below uh, to keep up with additional content. Um, as usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Why for now?